What's going on, beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time today to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. The cats, they're in the room. Here we are. We'll see how it goes. We're talking about white staples today. This is part three. I really enjoy filming these videos. Um, I really hope that you guys have also been enjoying filming these videos. My rationale, my thought process behind these videos in particular is to think through, if you're a commander player, you are thinking, what are cards that I can run in every single white commander deck or the variety of different commander decks? There are ones that are a little bit more like kind of niche, and we'll talk about those when we get to them. Um, but these are just pretty safe bets that regardless of what you're doing, regardless of the strategy or whatever, these are cards that without a doubt you can run that are pretty safe bets. Like I said, there's a little more specific stuff that are like, this is for like this type of deck, but if you're playing this type of deck, run this card. You know what I mean? We'll talk about that when we get there. But anyways, the first card is Thalia. We're talking about the three mana Thalia. Thalia. I believe I talked about the other Thalia in a different part. I really like both Thalias. Um, I run both in ladies, I believe. Um, this Thalia in particular, she's got first strike, which is cool. And then creatures and non-basic lands, your opponent's going to hold into the battlefield tap down. Let me just tell you something. You're playing commander. Let me tell you, people are playing non-basic lands. Just happening. You just screw so many people over. Like Thalia is just a like annoying card to play against, but it's really fun when you have it on your side because, um, it says opponent. So it does not impact you. So you get to play all the creatures and non-basic lands you control with no penalty. And then you get to penalize your opponents, which is the best thing in the entire world. She's awesome. She's really cool. It's like, for me, it's like, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, two mana thigh, whatever. For me, it's like, hey, run both. Run both. Why not? You can also run as your commander. There you go. I love Death and Taxes. Death and Taxes is so funny. We're also talking about a kind of other sort of like Death and Taxes card. Like, I believe... Do people still run Death and Taxes in Modern? I don't know. But people would play this card or, and then they would also play this card, which is Mother of Rune... Rune... Runes? Ruins? What? Why can't I say that word? Okay. Honestly, me filming videos is when I actually realized that I can't pronounce words. <laughs> this is just what I've uh, realized about myself. But anyways, Mother of Runes is really cool. Um, I feel like if you're in a situation where your commander is like incredibly sensitive and people are going to try to kill your commander a lot, I feel like this card is a really good way to be like, no. Um, it is, it's, it's honestly also like really, I feel like a very fair price to pay in the sense of like it's one mana and then you get to tap her. I think the best case scenario with this card in particular is if you're playing something that you need to protect and you have a way to potentially untap her with something like, I don't know, say you're playing her with like Seedborn Muse or like something like that or like all creatures untap um, at the beginning of your end step or something like that to kind of maximize their value. If you're not running that, that's like fine. But if you're playing it and you're like, someone's like, oh, go to remove it. And you're like, eh, nope, you can't remove her. Zelda's climbing on a chair. So what else is new? What are you doing? Hold on, she's being a psychopath. One second. Guys, she's like trying to climb on the inside of my chair. Please explain to me, cats. I don't understand them. And then here's Leia unbothered. I don't get it. Okay. Sig sigil? Sigil? Sigil of the Empty Throne. I actually wrote this word incorrectly on my notes and wrote the word citadel. And then Google was like, what do you, citadel of the Empty Throne? That card doesn't exist, but there you go. That's a new name for your next magic card. You're welcome, Wizards of the Coasts. You can, um, what does it trademark me on that one? Okay. The other day, um, <clears throat> Paul was playing his God's deck and he played this card. And I was like, this card is just so dumb. This card is so dumb, guys. It's like, if you're playing enchantments, you need to run this card. Because you make so many 4-4s. Four Hold on, guys. I gotta kick her out. She's being absolutely ridiculous. Remember we talked about cards in the beginning of like, it might be a little bit more specific. Like, you have to be running an enchantment decks, But it's one of those, like, if you're playing enchantments, run this card. It is like five mana but like I promise like it doesn't matter like every time you play an enchantment you just get an angel and it's a four four oh my gosh this card is absolutely ridiculous if I was playing an enchantment deck a thousand percent this card would be in there it's so good I don't feel like this card's very expensive too it's a very good card okay uh let's talk about a little bit of like card draw 
um, that I feel like White has been recently getting so much better at. And uh, this is one of the cards. It's called Dawn of Hope. And um, this card, I actually, um, I actually like this card. So it is two mana for an enchantment. Oh my god, this card would synergize really great with the Sigil of the Empty Throne that we just talked about. There you go. Whenever you gain life, you can pay two. And if you do draw a card, it is like a little expensive because you have to pay. But to me, this is very similar to a like Argyle's Bloodfast, for example, which is one of my favorite black cards. And then you have that ability, which is great. You get to draw cards. Now you do have to gain life. But what I like about this card is that it's got that that car thing on the bonus, which is for four mana, you get to make a token. But it has a lifelink, which is really cool. So you've got this blocker. I think this card is slightly expensive mana wise. But if you're really desperate and you're just looking for something that gives you life, like I run this card as an example in um, in Tesa, and it works really well because it gets me tokens, which I want in Tesa, um, because that's like the whole point of the deck. And then it gives me as well, like that little bit of card draw. I like Dawn of Hope. I think I wish this card was like, I honestly wish that like last ability was like three minutes out of four. I feel like the four is like a little steep, but that it also gives you a little bit of protection. Like it's going to get you a token and it synergizes with itself because the token is lifelink and then you gain life with the token, you know, whatever. And I feel like, honestly, I feel like in EDH, you always kind of want tokens laying around. You know, you always want them so that if someone goes to kill your thing, you're like, oh, no, we're the swing with their super big thing. And you're like, nah, block with my one one. And then you gain life. It's great. It's just all around great. Okay, the next card is Disenchant. This is for my people who are like on a budget and you need to get rid of artifacts and enchantments and you need to do it now. Disenchant, it's a, there's really not a whole lot to say with this card, guys. Honestly, it's like two mana, instant speed, you destroy artifact and enchantment. You're, you're going to hit things with this card, like zero questions, no doubts. There are things that you are going to need to remove and Disenchant helps get you there. This card's awesome. And there's like a thousand and million one arts for it. You know, you're going to like, you need to run artifact and enchantment removal and this is a card that you can run. Okay, um, talking about funny, a lot of like enchantment -y, like type cards, but like I said, if you're playing enchantments in white, like, oh my gosh, you need this. Meza Enchantress is so incredibly good. She's a three mana O2. When you cast an enchantment, you may draw a card. Absolutely a thousand percent. You are playing enchantments. I've talked about like three key enchantment cards in this video where you should run them if you're playing enchantments in white. This card is awesome. If I had an enchantment deck, I would run Mesa Enchantress, absolutely. I don't, though. I thought about it. Okay, speaking of, well, this is actually, this is not enchantments, this is equipments. Wow, the word enchantment and enchantment and equipment looked very similar to me. Anyways, Sagarda's Aid. If you are playing equipments and, and or, or auras, a thousand percent buy Sagarda's Aid. It is like about a five dollar card, but honestly, who cares? It's one mana, which is so good you can cast aura and equipment spells as though they had flash that is ridiculous that is just absolutely insane there's nothing better than in the world than flash like there's just drawing cards and flash those are the two best things in magic and whenever an equipment enters the battlefield you can just attach it for free how is this card one mana how 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 that's what i need to know if you're playing auras and equipments buy this card a thousand percent you need it it's so good Ah, uh, Amara Shepherd, Such a sweet little card. I like this card a lot. So, it's got landfall. Whenever a land ETBs under your control, you may, I don't know why you wouldn't, free is free, right? You may return target non-land permanent card from a graveyard to hand. And if it's a planes, you can put it on the battlefield instead. Okay. This card is like so cool to me because I feel like a lot of times when we think about like recursion we think about like black for example and black has some great recursion but Amara Shepard is a really solid card too I think the best case scenario for this card is in a mono color deck because you play your planes you just get a thing back for free this card is absolutely ridiculous. I love this card a lot. I'm actually really sad that I don't get to play with this card anymore because I had it in Avacyn, but none of my stuff died. So I was like, oh, I got nothing in the graveyard because all my stuff's indestructible. And then I just took it out. But Paul has this card in, um, I believe Karametra actually, and this card is really good. I like it. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm cracking up about this card because this card brings me back to my, um, 
to my to my days of playing modern and my days of playing modern when affinity would run this card and it cracks me up dispatch is the card that i'm talking about okay if you are playing artifacts in commander i feel like you need to run dispatch because this card is an additional path to exile it's so cool like if you control three or more artifacts like that is probably like one of the easiest things in the entire world to do because artifacts are like so cheap right and then you get an additional di like you get an additional path to exile so you can run path this and swords to posture and you've got three of those cards that are one mana that do that thing this card is so cool oh my gosh if you're playing if you're playing like white artifacts or even like no even if you're not if you're playing a bunch of artifacts and you have white, you should play Dispatch. I think it's so cool. And also, you can make a really dumb joke which says Witch Patch, Dispatch. That was the worst joke I've ever made on this channel. Anyways, last card we're talking about, we're ending on a really good note. And that is Council's Judgment. Whew, this card. Will of the Council. We love voting. We love voting it's so fun i've recently tapped into the world no pun intended of voting with a little magic card called expropriate and um i love it will of the council starting with you each player votes for a non-land permanent you don't control that is one of the most important and key things about this card is it it's not something you control so your opponents cannot get rid of stuff exile each permanent with the most votes or tied for the most votes now what is hilarious to me about this card is that let's just say you're playing in a um a four player commander game right so you pick your opponent's thing and then everybody else gets to also vote so there's a total of four votes in this situation that go around right this happens everybody does their votes everything's going great whatever whatever guys and there's a potential for there to be four things that get removed that is incredible you guys four things to be removed now it might not work out like that but it, you know you can be super political with this card or whatever you know what i mean i love council's judgment i think it's so incredibly cool it's like a it's like a better like oblivion ring a better detention sphere because you get to remove the potential to redo multiple things and if your opponents are playing smartly which they should it, this card should get rid of more than one thing absolutely a thousand percent no question so guys that is it for talking about white staples this is part three i would really love to know what cards and i also i don't know if i mentioned this at the beginning but i will be listing parts one and part two in the down below too so if you want to check those out if i didn't talk about one of your favorite cards here there's a really good chance i talked about it there but if i didn't let me know what cards i need to talk about in part four in a comment below if you enjoyed this video go and give it a thumbs up subscribe to yourself if you're not already and i'll catch you in my next one